Welcome to Tales of Fae and Folk. Today we are going to take a little look at the folk tradition of clouty trees and sacred wells, places full of hope and mystery, most possibly the continuation of a tradition of votive gifts left at springs as gifts to the gods and the goddesses or nature spirits to bring healing and blessings in the most ancient of times. Cloudy trees or wishing trees, sacred springs and running water, they go hand in hand in our folk tradition and the practice still comes to us today of using these places to ask for blessings and healing, leaving a small votive offering to aid the magic. Of course the number of these offerings over time can sometimes cause problems for the trees, but that aside the belief behind these strange places is fascinating and it is these beliefs and some examples of these places that we will look at today. These haunting places are found mostly in the Celtic areas. In the UK they sit in Scotland, Cornwall, Wales, the Isle of Man, Ireland and also the country of Era and in Brittany and France. These are magical places the ancient people's belief in appeasing the river or water spirits and gods to sacrifice an offering of metal, precious belongings, to keep folk safe, to ask for healing, for safe passage. These things are all incredibly well documented by historians and archaeologists. To this day, people still find ancient artefacts at places of ancient river crossings, on the edges of marshlands and at sacred springs. And there is a strong belief that the actions of leaving small offerings at the cloudy wells and the trees is an echo of this practice. These places have a haunting atmosphere, maybe a spring, a rock on stone lined, or a place to step in and bathe or collect water and close by a guardian tree standing sentinel by the spring magical and healing thought provoking very often a hawthorn white thorn tree fairy trees again if you find my episode about the hawthorn you will see how powerful these trees are sometimes though the tree is ash a tree sacred to the Druids, along with the oak and the hawthorn. So where does the name come from? In Scottish the word clouty or clute is a small strip of cloth or a rag. The practice of tying strips of fabric like these to the trees or by the wells brings us the name clouty trees, clouty wells. And in Yorkshire they also became cloughty and clouty and in Ireland they are known as clotty. The traditional use of these wells was to take cloth touched by the sick person or touched to the diseased or injured area, dip it in the sacred water and then tie it to the branches of the tree. A prayer or incantation would be whispered to the gods, the goddesses or spirits of the well. Many of these places became Christianized over time and are now classed as holy wells, dedicated to a particular saint. But the belief in the faith is still the same. The belief that as the rag decays so the illness or the injury of the sufferer would be healed, an act of sympathetic magic. And also this was a place to ask for blessings as well, the same dipping act but with the cloth or a small treasure left as a gift to the spirits of the place in hope of their magic help bringing about the result of the wish. Of course there are many local variations to the practices. Folklore changes and grows as generations use the places and bring their own energy and belief. 
And so in some places we will find people will circle the well a certain number of times, place coins secretly in the rocks by the well. And there are standalone trees with no sacred well at all, but strange, special and peculiar trees, ones with a feeling of other, that have become places of pilgrimage and offering. Certain dates also are most auspicious for begging these blessings. The pagan festival days, Imbolc on the 1st of February, Beltane the 1st of May, Lunasa the 1st of August and Samhain on the 1st of November. Of course, if there is a saint associated with the well, then that particular saint's day is a special day to visit also. Spend some quiet time there and ask for your wish or help. The beautiful tradition of well dressing is also an honouring to the spirits or God or saint. Flowers placed carefully around the spring or the well, creating stunning colourful artwork in acknowledgement of the sacredness of the water and place. The respect for the trees is also something that still stays with us to this day. We fight to protect them. And yet also for ephemeral reasons that we may not even understand. As the German poet and novelist wrote, For me, trees have always been the most penetrating preachers. I revere them when they live in tribes and families in forests and groves. And even more, I revere them when they stand alone. In their highest boughs, the world rustles. Their roots rest in infinity, but they do not lose themselves there. They struggle with all the force of their lives for one thing only, to fulfill themselves according to their own laws, to build up their own form and represent themselves. Nothing is holier. Nothing is more exemplary than the beautiful strong tree. When a tree is cut down and reveals its naked death wound to the sun, one can read its whole history in the luminous inscribed disc of its trunk, in the rings of its years, its scars, all the struggle, all the suffering, all the sickness, all the happiness and prosperity stand truly written. The narrow years and the luxurious years the attacks withstood and the storms endured, and every young farm boy knows that the hardest and noblest wood has the narrowest rings, that high on the mountains and in continuing danger, the most indestructible, the strongest and the ideal trees grow. Trees are part of our culture, our living day to day, our history, our prehistory, our magic and belief, our folklore, our fairy lore and religious lore. It is no wonder that we revere the trees and class these things as sacred. So now let's have a look at just a few of the cloudy places and the trees in the wells. In Cornwall, probably the most famous one here is at Madron. Nearby the well and tree site is also a ruined, very, very early and Christian well chapel. The way to the well and tree is quite a walk through shrubs and undergrowth, but it's worth it for any lovers of Celtic sites. In the 1600s, a local man, John Trelil, crippled and poverty-stricken, turned to the healing waters in hope of some relief. He bathed, and then he slept on a nearby hillock. When he awoke, he was completely cured. Locals would rebuild this mound every year, calling it St. Madern's Bed. On May Day, young women, and sometimes young men also from the town of Penzance, would gather here before sunrise to perform a ceremony in order to find out how many years it would be before they would marry. The act was to take two grass stems, about an inch or two centimetres long, and fasten them with a pin. This would be dropped into the cold water of the well, and the bubbles rising from the offering would tell how many years the wait for marriage would be. The tying of clouties was also carried out throughout this site's long history, 
and is still used to this day. St Philan's Clutie Well in Calallan in Renfrewshire was described in 1856 as a spring issuing from under a rock. Sick children were brought here for healing and also those who suffered with rickets. Pieces of cloth left as offerings until the end of the 1600s when the local priest had it filled with stones. However, in 1895, it was noted that water used in baptisms at the church nearby used water gathered from this very spring. Apparently, no branches overhang this site now as there are no trees. It is thought that a nearby farm has the water pipes to their property. At Lough Crew in County Meath in Ireland, a hawthorn clouty tree stands by an ancient passage tomb. Lough Crew is an incredibly important site of historical importance, with megalithic burials dating back as far as 3500 BC. In County Laos near Montrath, there is a wish tree misshapen and strange, and a sycamore this time and this is found at St Vinton's well. The original well was filled in, and yet the water now appears from the centre of the tree. Near the village of Munlochy in Scotland can be found an ancient cluty well, surrounded by bushes and trees used for votive offerings. The tradition of this well was to leave sick children overnight to bring about healing. Also in Scotland, within the woodlands at Culloden, not too far from the ancient battlefield is St Mary's Well. The pilgrimage day for this well was the first Sunday in May. On the Black Isle at Avoch Craigie Well, there are offerings of coins and clouty rags, and there is a fairy glen to be found here also. On the island of Marie, in Loch Marie, in the highlands of Scotland is a clouty tree of oak. Queen Victoria visited this place and wrote of it in her diaries. At this place the tree and all around are decorated with coins hammered into the tree bark. And this tree also has a nearby holy well, dedicated to St Malruva. There is more about this strange place in my Alphabet of Fairies letter M episode. Nearby Ardmadi House in Argyll and Scotland, there is an old tree with the branches and trunk full of hammered in coins. Each one represents a wish. In Renfrewshire in Scotland on the summit of Ferrens Braes at Neilston was an old hawthorn that was known as the kissing tree. Young men would try to drive nails completely into the trunk with a single blow and accomplishing this would earn him a kiss from his sweetheart right there and then. The original tree fell in 1860, but there was a replacement planted sometime around 1910. In Glasgow, there is a sacred well and an old tree beside it, the well dedicated to St Enoch or St Tanu. The tradition here was to nail little pieces of tin to the tree in the shapes of the place that needed curing, and so could be found here metal feet, eyes, hands, ears, legs, arms and so on. The tradition is being carried on to this day, with the planting of new trees used for wishing trees. In Glasgow's Hidden Garden and also at the Cagu Sami Ling Monastery in Scotland, also at Loch Lomond, and the Trossachs National Park Centre, new clouty trees are thriving. Labels are available so that you can write your wishes, and in the case of the Trossachs tree, these wishes are meant for bringing blessings for the environment and the planet. The tradition of clouty trees is also strong in Yorkshire and in the Lake District in the north of England. There is a yew tree that has coin offerings found at Clapham Beck in Ingleborough in Yorkshire. In this county can also be found Bolton Abbey with another coin hammered tree. In the Lake District of England, the county of Cumbria has the remains of a coin tree at Tarn House, found on the west side of the path of the waters of the Tarn. 
another nod to sacred waters, no doubt. Although I no longer live in England, here where I am in the mountains of southern Spain, the reverence for sacred springs and healing waters is so very respected, and traditions are still carried on to this day. Although I have not found any cloudy areas yet, there is a strange connection to the Celtic area of Spain and this place in southern Spain, Lanjaron, and also healers and witches. So I am pretty sure that the people that came here from northern Spain brought with them their cloudy traditions also. And of course, there are wishing trees all over the world. Maybe you could let me know if there are wishing trees near you because I would love to hear about them. Thank you for joining me on another episode about our wonderful folklore. Now, for those that love Mark's art, did you know you can buy lots of products featuring the paintings and illustrations that we use in the videos? All sorts of interesting things for gifts or for treats for yourself. You can also order prints of the art and even some original pieces by both Mark and myself also. And finally, for those of you who love crafting, we also have digital downloads for things like decoupage, journaling and collage art. All of the links to where you can find these lovely things are in the video description. So until next time, dear friends, take care, brightest of blessings and remember, don't play with the fairy folk or you may end up in one of my folk tales yourself.